Hi everyone, it's Seth Rudesky doing this Obsessed and I film a lot of them in a row. So Andrew Martin was scheduled to do this one and my filming was going a little long. So I literally texted her, I wrote, I'm filming right before you in the room. So wait in the hallway. And she wrote, wow, not since my audition for Oklahoma. So cut to, <laughs> I wanted to know if she was here yet. So I walked out, literally no joke, this is what I saw. So right around the corner. <laughs> and Mom. Told Mom. My turn? <clears throat> Mom! <clears throat> Territory folks could. Hey! Lily just committing to the joke. She's just literally sitting with him. And by the way, Lily borrowed a fiction resume to make it look like. Okay, bye bye. Now let's okay. do it. And poor Roger. Okay. There we are. Thank you! Ah. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we're actually here. So Andrea's here promoting her book. Andrew Martin's Lady Parts. Yeah, I'm also here because I love oh. Seth Rudetsky. <laughs> okay, ass kissing. Yeah. Uh, obsessed with this book, a thousand things I want to say. Now, first of all, it's called Lady Parts, but in the Playbill article, it said Steve Martin wanted you to call it Perky Pits. <laughs> Perky Pits. So I called Andrew and I said, for some reason. And I read the article and I thought, oh, maybe Playbill won't allow the real word. So I just let it go. So then I, Seth Andrew, I was like, Perky Pits? Like, and Roger, aren't, what's happening? So Andrea hesitantly wrote Andrew Gans. Turns out he didn't hear it through the phone. Steve Martin actually wanted to call the book Perky t but Wanted to call the book Perky, Perky t We're going to beeping that out. Perky t Beeping it out. Okay, there's a whole chapter, whole chapter on that. Okay, the book is amazing. Second thing I want to say is that there's an entire chapter all about the making of SCTV, obsessed with that because I grew up obsessed. But the whole thing is sort of like musings about her life. I mean, it's, it's in and out. It's just fascinating. But the point is all about SCTV. Talk about Edith Prickley, your character. How the hell did you come up with that? Go. And by the way, I asked her to tell this. She goes, that old chestnut story? Just tell the damn story. It takes five seconds. Go. <laughs> you know, there isn't a lot about show business in this book, startlingly enough. No, but my mother-in-law is obsessed with it. Andrea thinks it's for all women over 64. Go. <laughs> And young boys who are just coming to terms with their homosexuality <laughs> under 23. That's, the, that's what this book is for. Runs the gamut. Tell them this quickly. So we're doing Second City, and uh, I'm in Second City with Catherine O'Hara and John Live Candy and, and Eugene Levy and um, uh, Joe Flaherty. And, uh, you know, in, in improv, I don't know if you know, but uh, in all improv, usually at the end of the evening, um, there's a set show and then they take the actors take suggestions from the audience about what scenes the audience would like to see perform. So the audience yelled out, do a parent teacher scene where the teacher where the parents have delinquent kids. So that was the seat that was a suggestion. I, we rush backstage and I see Catherine O'Hara's leopard jacket and leopard hat that it was her mother's from the 50s that she'd brought backstage we brought each other we brought costumes from our homes i put the leopard jacket on put the hat on found some black glasses and i put them on i had there was some red lipstick there and i put that on i knocked on the door at the teacher conference and Catherine says you must be did she say mrs prickley i think so yeah no. <laughs> you must be mrs prickley and i said that's right dear edith's the name sebastian's the game <laughs> And the character was invented. Now, Catherine reminded me, though, that, and I had forgotten this, that every night for 10 days, she tried a different name. Like, yeah, yeah, she tried a different name. You must be, you know, Mrs. Anderson, and prickly stuck. And I still have that jacket and still have the hat. And, um, yeah, Lily, we still do it. I mean, we do the show, her show, uh, and Lily wears the same costume. Okay, so Lynn, my mother, Miranda from In the Heights, is obsessed with STTV like I am, obsessed with Edith Prickley, and he and Andrea wrote this rap together for Edith Prickley that's actually in the book. And I thought we'd superimpose like a little Edith Prickley on her and we'd do some of the rap. This is by <laughs> Lynn manuel Miranda because literally it's the coolest I'm ever going to be. Just saying his name with my name <laughs> sort of makes me cool. Okay. Ready? Edith Prickley. Yeah. Here. What am I supposed to do? Shrivel up and cry now. Menopause and then applause and thank you. Can I die now? What I'm pushing 60. Suddenly I'm sickly. Hey, suck this Dixie cup. I'm Edith Prickly. Okay, my other favorite line. Now I'm worried that performance actually made Lynn Manuel Miranda less cool. <laughs> See? <laughs> Doesn't go that way. Yeah. Wait, do that prickly and I'm loud, my other favorite part. Uh, uh, one, two, three. Mm. I'm prickly and I'm loud. What? I'm prickly and I'm proud. What? I'm wearing leopard print so you can pick, pick me, me in a crowd. crowd. Okay. 
doubly uncool. What one? Uh, <laughs> it was amazing. Okay, also the book is one of my favorite stories because like, it's not a lot of show business, but there's a whole chapter on STB and one whole chapter on Broadway. And she tells this great story about young Frankenstein. Please tell that story about how you sort of sassed Mel Brooks, but not really go. Well, I was very intimidated around Mel Brooks because, you know, he's an icon in the comedy world and he's a genius and he's still going strong and he's in his 80s. And I worship him. I was really intimidated. So we were in Seattle in tryouts with Young Frankenstein and there was a, a scene that I thought, oh God, I'll have to add a line here. I don't know, but I was too scared to ask Mel. So I called Nathan Lane and um, Marty Short, who of course worked with Mel, and I said, what should I do? And they both said, try the line out in the show. Don't tell Mel. And if it gets a laugh, believe me, he'll let you keep it in. So this was the scene. This is how it was supposed to be. <clears throat> First, she was Frau Blucher. So yes. I'll be Dr. Frankenstein, <laughs> and Sutton Foster's next to me. You know, she's Inga, looking amazing, and knocks on the castle door. Like, oh, okay. Not. Frau Blucher. <clears throat> Good evening, and welcome, Dr. Frankenstein. To may I ask, is this lovely young creature? This is my new laboratory assistant, Inga. Assistant, huh? How do you do? So that was basically what it was supposed to be. So this is what Andrea added to the show one night. <clears throat> Good evening. And welcome, Dr. Frankenstein. And who may I ask is this lovely young creature? Mrs. Inga, my new laboratory assistant. Assistant, huh? So that's what they're calling them these days. <laughs> How do you do? Just side note. I A started laughing, B messed up my line. <laughs> but that's a side note. Wait, so what happened? Go. So it got a huge laugh from the audience. Um, and uh, Mel came backstage after the show and he knocked on my dressing room door and he said, It's in, but no credit. That's all good. And finally, another reason to read this book, I'm telling you. My mother-in-law really did love this book, you know, because I'm like, oh, I know Andrea, I like it. She loved this book. It's like, it's like 40 chapters and all these great stories, slice of life. It's really wonderful. And it also gets really dark. Can I just read the quote on the cover from Tina Fey? Literally from Tina Fey. Now, I asked Tina Fey at my birthday party if she would give a quote about Andrea. And if you, she'd read the book. And, and I'd, she'd read oh the book. Oh, my God, she doesn't have time. And that's hey, ridiculous. Hey, read the whole book and listen to the quote. I have loved Andrea Martin from afar for many years, but now, after reading this funny and heroically honest book, I would like to take <laughs> things to the next level and marry her. <laughs> it's such a great quote. Okay, and finally, this little this is the ending of the book, which I'm obsessed with. Spoiler alert, it's the ending, but I'm just obsessed with this story. So, it was your idea to put it at the end, too. I, I love think, that. I think. I think it's a great summation. It's cool, so yeah. I'll, be, I'll act it out, so this is true. Oh, mm. I've got new contacts. Hope I can read it. So this is the epilogue. A couple of years ago, I was spending the afternoon at the Whitney Museum of New York, taking in all the wondrous art of Edward Hopper. I saw out of the corner of my eye a woman staring at me, and then she averted her gaze. Oh, God, I thought, can a celebrity get some downtime without being bothered by your fans? Is there always paparazzi lurking about? Don't I deserve a little privacy? Am I going to have to pull an Alec Baldwin and punch her out? At that moment, I felt a tap on my shoulder. It was the woman. She spoke quietly and hesitantly. Excuse me, I, I don't mean to bother you, but... Are you Cher's mother? True story. Gotta go. <laughs>